Hello and welcome to Perilous Pursuits, a live D&D podcast where a bunch of us nerdy-ass friends sit around a Zoom call and play D&D. Tonight we follow a fledgling group heading north into Ice Windale. Warning, some content may not be suitable for all audiences. So are we starting? What's You're going ready? on? I'm waiting. I'm waiting okay. for someone to recap this shit from... Well, we gotta roll a d20 for that. <laughs> oh, crap. Aren't I exempt from it since I've done the last six or something? No. <laughs> no, you are not. Just roll better. Be We're gonna try and get you to do the whole campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I got a natural 20. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck, I got a five, and I can't I, remember shit. I got a five, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'm wasting my Eight. natural 20 on a recap. <laughs> and I, I listened to it today, so... <laughs> I listened to, like, five minutes of it today. <clears throat> What'd you roll, Ray? 13. Okay, I guess cleared. Mike and uh, Gord, you got to re-roll. Roll off? Or you got to do one word each at a time. Yeah, well, one word at a time? You just hand up. I got a crit. Oh, oh you yeah. bastard. <laughs> oh, a 19. Oh, you oh, fucker. Oh, he loses it with a 19. <laughs> oh, shit. I got to try and remember this. That's hilarious. There goes all of our good rolls. Yeah. All that ones from here on. We'll go into the other room if I'm too loud. <laughs> Attaboy. It seems like a you problem, not a me problem. Yeah, that seems like a you problem, not a me problem. <laughs> I'm just going to see something later. thrown at his head yeah, across the room. A, a punch across the street. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try and remember. I'm going to probably screw it up here. I'm going to leave my headphones slightly off so I can hear myself. Art set the precedent the last time because I fucked it up so bad. He basically did his own. So, <laughs> well, you did it in your uh, your voice though. So, <laughs> well, remember I crotched my uh, crystal, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, your crotch crystal. Your crotch my crotch crystal. crystal. Yeah. Crystal. yeah. <laughs> I thought that was your prison bag or whatever. Your prison prison pocket. pocket. Yeah. No, 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 no. Not in the pocket. It's in the. Yeah, it's in the it's inside the perineum. <laughs> your balls hang down so low. <laughs> it's your... right over it. <laughs> it's got a little piece of tape that just folds back up and just it sits <laughs> underneath there. It's ball cleavage. <laughs> yeah, I just pull them apart. And then just... <laughs> They're sticky together. <laughs> Holds anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh. <laughs> Hold anything four inches and smaller. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, you're, you got a salty gem now. Yes. Quincy is well hung. <laughs> All right. I get, I need to get into my smoke. Uh... <laughs> I need to get I smoking. I don't know if you should edit this out or just leave it <laughs> yeah, in. No, I, might, I might just leave it in. Just leave it in. Uh, uh, it's too bad we're not. Either uh, in the upper cabinet or down below. It's too bad that we're not recording the video and see all the tears. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, we were down in the uh, in the mines of Temelane. And uh, Mr. Magoo over there, he... He, he found a skull with a crystal in it and uh, started either he was talking to it or something we think i don't know did we see you talking to it never mind so anyways he's sitting there ta- looking at this skull and talking to it and then uh we tried to take it away from him but uh, the uh he hit his uh gem that was in the skull underneath his uh his robes there uh, and uh nobody really wanted to get it after that so we ended up talking. We did a couple of uh, long rests, and we went back to Timberlane and uh, Maximus and the miners. We did a really good show at the at the Blue Clam, Blue Clam, the Blue Clam, and uh, we did really good. We talked to the uh, 
talk to the mayor of the town and uh you know we we uh cleaned up the mines and we won uh we won uh completed our mission and but he would not pay us so um yet yet so that was oris matthew he's the uh, town mayor so he still owes us 50 gold if he doesn't i might have to bite his head off and uh you know, I, 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 as a layman, we don't, we're not really known for our memory. So you need to get loxodons for that. So that's a really all I remember. <laughs> he's gonna meet us at the blue clam tomorrow at noon, and he's gonna pay us. Oh, we might have to kill him. What the hell's a loxodon? It's, it's got a really big member in the front. A saggy member. Oh. It's a gray, big one. <laughs> I have to leave it all in. The callback. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the director's cut episode. <laughs> <laughs> now we have gray. We have gray penises. <laughs> who, who mentioned? Who mentioned? Come on, Ooh, come on, Mike. Yeah. Stay in character. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> Anyways, we are back at the uh, Blue Clam, and uh, I think we went to bed. We went to sleep at the um, East Side Inn. I slept with uh, uh, Mr. Magu, and uh, it's morning. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do. Unless we already figured out what we're going to do. And then sure. and then an overpowering voice that knows the whole universe will come in and fix everything I just said. <laughs> For that, you need to listen to the last episode. <laughs> so you guys are in, in sleeping in the east side inn. On the east side of Tremble. Where, where were the cobalts? At this uh, point? They got left at the Blue Clam for Quinn Casperow to deal with. Ah, okay. You know that uh, you will. Horace Mastu uh, told you that he'd be there probably around noon at the Blue Clam to uh pay you guys because you had to go to the mine and just check it out you guys told him about some of the damages and some of the other things that you found there you did not allude to all the other mining like you told him about the growl you didn't really tell him much about tracks but a little bit um you told him to watch the damage in yeah. the, the sabotage yep yeah you told him about that um, you didn't tell him about the piss bucket Oh, that got cleaned. Yeah, prestidigitation. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna say that it got cleaned. <laughs> Certain things you can't get out. No, <laughs> the asper- permanent stains. <laughs> the asparagus bucket. Yep. Could have used a wish on that. <laughs> Should have. Still would have stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the deck of cards would have burned up. Couldn't do it. Um, yeah, so you guys are in the East Side in uh, care of what's her name? Marta. And you guys paid five gold and you went to bed. Um, does everyone want to give me a roll of d20 for me? Natty one. Bidding. After my natural 20, I got a natty one. I'm just <laughs> bidding. Smoke got 11. On got 11. Didn't see. 15. 15, okay. That's funny. Two 11s, two 15s. A couple of hmm. pairs. I'm all in. So. Maximus, you don't sleep well. Your dreams are filled with haunting memories of Sephic and 
what happened in there, followed by morphing faces and that turn into this apparition that came out of tracks, um, mixed in with haunting music from your past. Um, you still get a long rest, but you are going to be debilitated today from your dreams. It's called. I'll let you know what that looks like. Point of exhaustion? Nope. No. Okay. Okay. You definitely are haunted in your dreams tonight. Okay. <clears throat> you all wake up. Um, Maximus, you definitely are the late comer in the waking up because of your restless night. You finally fall asleep slowly in peaceful dreams after many hours of tossing and turning, turning and frantic calling out at points just to as your dreams led you. I would say Quincy and Yeti, you are probably the first awake, um, followed by uh, Smoke and Ponto. Do you want to guys need to do anything in your rooms before you exited, or? I pick up my bear trap. <laughs> Good, call. Good call. And disarm it. <clears throat> Better call. <laughs> yeah, pick up your bear trap. Good joke. <laughs> Wakes me up. Yeah, I'm a man. I'll, I'll say to Quincy, uh, Quincy, I, did you even get up during the night? I, I feel like I never even had to move the bed. Or did, do you have to go? Or did you go? Uh oh. Do I have to roll for that? <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> roll for wetting the bed. Well, only, only when I want to like be cruel will I make that happen. <laughs> Ponto, did you need to do anything this morning before you um, go out into public? In your Ponto probably room? would have woken up a little bit earlier, but uh, done his regular morning messing around with his tools, making sure that all of his inventory is where it's supposed to be, and tinkering around and working on Toxol and all that good stuff. So just to spend okay. the first part of my morning doing the tinkering all right so the four of you wake up um smoke and quincy you're obviously in the same room and um yeti and ponto you're in your separate rooms um you all wake up to the smell of food being cooked and being prepared as it is in the same little space in the inn through these underground tunnels these like little nooks that are in underground where it's a little bit warmer less impactful in the wastelands of Icewind Dale right now smells good Maximus go you down. probably come out maybe 10 or 15 minutes after everybody else is already out of the room but you have bags under your eyes I won't give you the point of exhaustion, but we'll, we'll figure something out. So, you all meet in the dining room, grabbing something to eat. Yeah. I think it's an eggs and bakes morning. Yeah, I'm shoveling as much food as I'm allowed into my face. As much meat as they'll sell me. I'm going to actually, uh, I think, provide an extra gold piece because I don't want to be eating too much food. Sure. And in inconvenience, sir. Just, just take it out of your inventory. Yep. It, what does breakfast is included, though? Yep, it is. Yeah, but I'm okay. eating for two. Okay. Or, or three. He's pregnant. I'm preggers. Got a lot of gold sitting here. So you guys eat your meal. Uh, Marta is running around and bids you good morning. Uh, hope you all slept well. Um, and, and frantically waves and dances off uh, to keep going 
and serve more guests and start getting rooms cleaned up and whatnot. Um, you guys are sitting around a table all eating breakfast. If you guys want to say something, otherwise we will continue forward. Gonna be a good day, boys. Resting day, right? At least till noon. I'll, I'll look up the window. Well, what kind of weather do I see? Um, you're underground. There's no windows here. Oh, okay. <laughs> does um, does Maximus have like um, like a fancy scarf or anything like that? <laughs> Currently on or in my in my bag of tricks? Do I notice that you have like fancy scarves or anything like that? I have lots of things for in my in my garment bag. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to wait till he's not watching his garment bag and I'm going to slip out one of his fancier silk sashes or something like that. Wait, when are you doing this? Like while I'm in my room? Well, um, when I get a chance. When I'm at breakfast? Sure. Because uh, my garment bag I wear as a cape. Oh, okay. And it has my, my change of clothes and outfits and costumes. So you're it's like wearing a sack, not a cape? Yeah, it's a cape, <laughs> but inside the cape is all of my Very costumes. Yeah. So you look like a hunchback so, in Notre Dame? So you like grab the cape and you're like, hey guys, want a costume? And there's like a bunch of pockets with like <laughs> glasses and <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he's got watches and scarves and good to know <laughs> yeah I'm okay. gonna let you describe what that looks like I'm not going to uh, uh, Maximus you um you got any like uh, uh scarves or something I can borrow borrow uh, I don't have like a snot rag for you these oh, are uh, no, exquisite no, no. garments well, I know. It's, it has to be very fine. Like a silky smooth fabric I need. You have something like that? I'll give it right back to you. No hard done. Okay, and I'll go into my garment bag and I'll, I'll hand him the worst one. Like the absolute... I was going to throw this out anyway, but I'm not going to tell him that. Okay, what's it look like? It's kind of like, um, what's the the checkered kind of checkered ounce tooth? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't go with anything. It's what you use in the woods when you don't find enough leaves. Okay, that's okay. what it looks like. Okay. Hopefully, this works for you. Okay, uh, I'll take that. And uh, I'm going to pull my side crystal out of my crotch there and polish it up with this thing. <laughs> and then I'm going to give it back to you. I don't accept it. I, I don't want that. You keep it. Very moist. <clears throat> yeah, we're all starting to learn Quincy. <laughs> yeah, that's the last Quincy, time, I, Quincy last time you borrow something from me. Quincy plucks a little hair off. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> little gray hair. <laughs> so you guys finish eating. Uh, <coughs> Marta comes up to you and is like, oh, uh, everything went well last night? Everybody slept well? Yes, thank you. Oh, just, no. Mm -hmm. Not a oh. good night, but it wasn't your fault. Uh, you know, I just, I'm going through some stuff right now and a lot of stress and, you know, managing the band and, you know, trying to get the tour dates nailed down. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, while, uh, oh. while he's talking, uh, Quincy's going to try and sleight of hand this, um, scarf back into his, uh, into his robe. Apartment. Garment bag. Yeah, cape. I rolled. I rolled a twenty. Oh. I rolled a nineteen plus 
so Marta's talking to you and she's quite interested and she's she's very empathetic with uh with it's like oh I, I'm so sorry and and you're just like you're just kind of like hand in your hands rubbing your eyes and Quincy just like leans over and Marta's not really paying attention she she could see Quincy there but doesn't see the hand just puts the scarf back in mm-hmm feel like there should be a smell check involved in maybe like <laughs> 24 hours it's like that one dirty sock that got in the clean clothes that came out of your work boot that's just like what is that <laughs> later today smoke is going to be sniffing around there and like, <laughs> um Marta's, I, i'm so sorry uh you know it's it's been so kind of you guys to to help us out and clear up that problem in the mines and you know all the work you've been doing at the blue clam it's it's sure appreciated by everyone here um it's not very often we get bards traveling through or groups of people that perform it it's much appreciated and she's she feels very sorry for your lack of decent sleep marta it do you know of um any other towns that could use a good bard and uh, you know some good some good music oh do you, do, I mean, do you know if they have a pub up in uh, Lonelywood hmm Lonelywood I haven't been there in, been there in a few years since before winter came um, I'm sure there's a pub up there give me a minute it'll come back to me I promise um, she's standing there she's like what was it that's right. It was called the Lucky Liar. Oh, that's what it was called. And do you know whose enterprise that is? Or not? Do you know who works there or who owns the place? No, it's been it's been too long since I've been there. <laughs> um, definitely a human a human a human woman ran that place. If I'm not mistaken. Her name just escapes me. Sorry. Um, and that brings me to my second point. Do um, you know where I could purchase a map? Oh, a map? Um, well, I know Oris has one. Um, I don't know if, if there would be one in town. Hmm. She, she stops and thinks about it for a second. She's like, um, probably, probably Quinn Caskrow would be the right guy to ask. Kind of knows a little bit of everyone. Um, sorry, can't can't help you too much there. Maximus, okay. leave her alone. She's making our breakfast. I'm already, I'm already eating mine. Well, but I want thirds. And she's like, oh, thirds, sure, sure. And she she takes some bacon out of her tray and and other uh, eggs that are there and put some more on your plate and puts it back into the tray and she's like you know uh, again we're, we're very we're very thankful for what you guys are doing here um, it's been quite nice to have a somewhat normal time here in Termaline with you singing and, and clearing up that problem in the mine I'm sure things will get better other than this weather. That'll get better too one day. Oh, can't wait for that. Nothing's growing proper. Food's just starting to dry up. So, uh, Smoke will go up nice. to Marta and he'll say, one of the reasons I am here in Icewind Dale is I am looking for maybe like a great gift that maybe Icewind Dale could provide, wherever, whatever that may be, or wherever that might be. How about that hanky? I, that's like, well, I'll think about that one. <laughs> but uh, Marta, have you, have you heard of any artifacts or anything that has been? Wow, that you know that guy had a really cool sword or a, a crown or a, a painting. 
something that is known as Icewind Dale is famous that came from Icewind Dale. Grimshaw. I know Lonelywood has a lot of Scrimshaws. Um, they definitely have some business in there and carvings and whatnot. Um, that is very helpful. Thank you very much. And your breakfast really, was delightful. Oh, it's appreciated. Make sure uh, to tell people that, you know, where you ate and that it was really good here. And, you know. Well, hopefully the miners can make more money and they can start spending more money here. Yeah, yeah, most Max of the miners doesn't give us sleep. any money. I just paid for all the stuff. <laughs> it's like our dad. <laughs> I want my allowance. <laughs> when you do something useful, you'll get it. Oh, oh. oh there's a burn. <laughs> um, Marta says uh thank you much uh so much again are, are you gonna stay one more night or you guys off after you uh you know get paid well maximus you have another band uh band night don't you well if uh if we can make a do a concert in lonelywood while we're at this end of the uh uh, of the Icewind Dale, you know, let's go up to Lonelywood and, and do a performance up there and add that to our tour dates. And, you know, then we could go maybe Bryn Shander, you know, we'll just do the whole circuit. Yeah, uh, you guys were definitely up on the on the one side of Icewind Dale. We're kind of tucked up at the top end. So if there's you nothing guys... else past Lonelywood, right? That's no. the as that's in it? towns, no, that's it. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff out there. I mean, all sorts of beasts and creatures are out in the wilds. It's, if you're going out there, you better be prepared. I'm always prepared. What is beyond yeah. the plains? Uh, I heard somebody talk about an ocean or a sea. Oh, the sea is it's way up to the north. Northwest, if I remember right, it's quite a ways. Um, anyways, um, it's been a pleasure getting to know all of you. Um, we will be back for more bacon one day, yes, maybe quite tomorrow. Nice. Yeah, maybe well, tomorrow, I mean, tomorrow. If we go spend a night in Lonelywood, we'll probably be back the following night. Buy more pigs, please. <laughs> that's good uh, you can always stay here again if needed um, I, I would write, maybe recommend um, buying some snowshoes if you guys haven't already if you're traveling up to Lonelywood it makes traveling a little bit easier oh does it keep you warm up? no it just makes you travel faster so you get warmer faster then get out of the elements yeah that's one way of looking at it. That's a good idea. Your mic's not down, Mike. Do you have any sleds? Uh, I don't have any sleds. Again, um, Quinn might be the man you're looking for with that. No, well, but do they sell them in town here? Oh, uh, probably not. It's not one of the things we're known for. Um, Where would we look for snowshoes? Oh, I got I it's like no, most of the stuff we, we acquire through Oris. Um that's one of his responsibilities as speakers, just like some of that that merchantile stuff that naturally comes with talking and knowing everybody. Wouldn't those be cold? Wouldn't what be cold? She was, she was made, of, made snow. Out of snow. <laughs> Yep. Shoes out made out of snow would be quite cold, but snowshoes are something you attach to your boot and allows you to travel in the snow on top of it. Oh. Yeah. Thanks for the advice. We will talk to Oris. Yeah, I pr appreciate it. Um, 
You guys are heading out pretty soon. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a meeting at noon, right? At the yeah. guys, is that yeah. right? Yeah. The only note I took. <laughs> I apologize now if we have to kill your mayor. What? Don't, We're not don't, killing the mayor. Don't kill him. His, he's, he's been the one of the better speakers we've had in in years. Okay. Oh, it's okay. As long as he pays us some money. I, he's probably just has to check and she's actually quite frightened and she's like she's like staring and kind of like looking back at, at like Quincy and Maximus and I'll, I'll, you know, Fonto and like I'll, I'll say don't worry don't wait I'll give her a big smile with my teeth sticking out the nervousness does not go away from the small she's like really don't 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 hurt him he's he's been quite good I'm sure he's delicious <laughs> the rest of us are not planning on hurting him. I promise. That's that's really good. I think he has a bad sense of humor. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, take it seriously. Oh oh. All right. Um, Maximus, could could I bother you for one second? Sure, anything. What do you uh, need? She'll just um, she'll just back up and. Just kind of give you a bit of space between you and your group. Um, she's like, I, you look really awful. I'm not gonna lie. You sure you're gonna be okay today? Probably smells bad too. Well, you know, <laughs> in Waterdeep we have this um, this drink called coffee. Do you have any of that? Uh, I mean, yeah, we we have coffee. It's it's right there at the. I, I think I need some more of that. Uh, and I'll go pour myself you, a big, she's not done. tall glass of coffee. She's like, are you, are you guys really going to help us out? Help You've you out. We quite, did help you quite out. Quite a thing here. Yeah. Are you, you going to go do the same in the other towns? If that's what's needed. I mean, I was planning on going in, you know, performing. I I just know that a lot of people in this place are doing so good. And every little bit can help. So if you're willing to help us out, I'm willing to help help you guys out. Well, of course we're willing to help. Um we cleared the mine and and i mean in lonelywood if they have a problem i'm sure that's nothing that maximus and the miners can handle i mean every every town has its own problems and, and quandaries so to speak i mean we're not out of the woods here there's other stuff going on but it's more oris's job not mine i'm just just i just take care of the end I, it's like if guys are looking for a map I mean I can, I can give you one the one I have it would help you out yeah I mean we need something um, we're kind of just lost out here without a map and she'll like regard you and, and oh, okay um, can you roll a persuasion check for me you got it That's a nine. I don't know. I'm not feeling so good, you know. I'm, I'm, I can't hear you. Oh, I got a nine. Can anybody else hear him but me? You got yeah, it. I can. I hear can him. Yeah. Okay, I can't hear anybody. It's all right. Well, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's probably not all right. Well, we're taking over the having duties now. Ray, you just got a horrible sword. Yes, thank you very much. And Andy. Maximus, uh, I think that nine did wonders. Here's the map in my panties. <laughs> so the, the, the new rules is you got to get the middle of a D20? Nope, yeah, that's, uh, that's, so that's what we're working on. A critical <laughs> middle. I'll be back in uh, a second. The middle 90% oh, there we go. the sweet spot. Hey, <laughs> there we go. That was so strange. It's just like the audio just like dropped. <laughs> 
We could hear you the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I know you could because I could see that my vol my mic was being picked up. Um, um, you rolled a nine. I rolled a nine, but I do have inspiration. I think I'd like to use it. I'd like to make sure this goes well, even though I'm not feeling very good right now, and you know, sleep deprived. I roll again, and I got a sixteen. No, seventeen. Yeah, she'll she'll stare and just be like, if you promise that to help the others, I I'll part with this. And she like runs behind the counter and like pulls out this like cylinder that's sealed up both ends, and, like hands it over to you. It's like this is this is the map that's just just a little bit plain, but it, it'll at least give give you the right direction that you need to go in. Wow, thanks. Uh, well, I can't I can't accept this without giving you something in return. And I'll go into my bag where I know I have all my scarves. <laughs> and I'll, I'll see that there's this hound's tooth one that I'm like, ah, I thought I gave that one away. But I'll, I'll push past that one and go to this nice, elegant silk scarf. And I'll offer it to her as a gift in return. Oh, really? It's that's very kind of you. Thank you. And she'll kind of blush a bit and take your scarf in return. Smoke is smoke smells something in the air. <laughs> something in the air tonight, smoke. <laughs> I'll look over at Yeti and I'll say, do, 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 do. Did, but Quincy, uh, <laughs> did he did he pee on Maximus? What? How would I know? He smells Maximus smells like Quincy. Why do uh, you know you're you're you know exactly what Quincy smells like? Yeah, he's pissed on me. I, I, I don't want to be a part of whatever you're talking about. <sighs> he's <laughs> smoke smells his hands. He's like, oh that is what Quincy it smells like this. Like. I'll hold it up to Yeti's <laughs> face. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving. I'm gonna go see if they have bacon at the blue clam. Now, now that now that everybody's distracted, uh, Ponto's going to uh, shovel a whole bunch of like half-eaten bacon into his uh, bag of holding. None of mine sure. was half-eaten. <laughs> any 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 scraps? Just it's just a bunch yeah. of fat. Do you, do you want to roll for bacon? I would contest any bacon being taken away from me. The quality of the bacon. My halfling luck to roll the one bacon. <laughs> That's going to be 15 bacon. Yeah, you got 15 bacon in your bacon, bag of oh, bacon holding. Fuck it, bacon. <laughs> in your bacon hole. <laughs> um, so Marta just uh, says thank you, puts the scarf on, and just kind of like nods. It's just like it's, it's been appreciated all the work you've done, and thank you. Uh, I, I must be off again. I, I do have to get the rest of the rooms ready before as people leave. So, thank you. Um, best of hey. wishes and good luck. Hey Maximus, what's up, buddy? You look tired. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just it's stressful. You know, like trying to trying to plan where all the different stops are i know like now i got this map and it's going to make things easier but yeah i didn't sleep very well last night ah, need a good berry uh well we just had breakfast i mean good berries are great but you okay. know, maybe later no today. good berries then <laughs> <laughs> so you know, those, uh those good berries they really fill me up yeah, they make it so you can eat less bacon. It's I heard some people really. are allergic to them. No, oh, that's a lie. <laughs> so uh, Maximus has this map cylinder um, in his possession, and you can add to your inventory a map of Iceland Vale, Beautiful. such as the one that you can look at on Roll20. Uh -huh. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. 
So lonely would make sense. It's close and uh, there's no other good way to get there if we're like making a tour of the whole place, eh? Yeah, I mean, if we're, if we're going to Lonely Wood, it better be going now, right? We're yeah, right yeah, yeah. So I guess we should try and find some snowshoes or snow dogs or sled dogs or something. The snowshoes sound, sound like a good idea. Yeah. I, I think we should get a sled. Uh, we, we looked at the price of that before and we didn't have anywhere near enough money, right? No, not like a that big is... sled, like a toboggan. Oh, like just to carry stuff or what? Yeah. And if we get some downhills, we can get some good... Some good speed built up. Or uh, Yeti could pull me on it. Yeah. You can just use a shield. <laughs> I think we should get the boots, uh, the snowshoes anyways. Well, maybe we could get both. Somebody get this man a shield. Thank you, Spencer. What? <laughs> Whatever that was went over my head. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So are we going to the store or what? <clears throat> I don't know. Is there you tell a store? me. Is there a store that we know about there in this place? Is no store in this town. Yeah, so yeah, we gotta go back to the to blue clam. Right? And this is a large town. Yeah. This is not a large town. No. Tourmaline? This Tourmaline is not a large town. It says large town on the map. This yeah, map is it's, garbage. It's, <laughs> it's not that big. It's, it's not like it's not like a major town like Bryn Shander or East Haven. Those are major towns. Targos is pretty decent in size. It definitely has its own, but Tourmaline kind of far up in the north all by itself so we got to see quinn at the blue clam maybe get some more supplies well, yeah and apparently he to... might be able to help us out right the, the mayor the mayor probably knows everybody in town here and he might know some craftsmen that make actual snowshoes or sleds there's gotta yep. be someone here and we're gonna see him at noon let's go to the blue clam and see what else we can get before noon is, is Maximus going to share all of this information that he got on uh, that we should talk to Quinn and oh yeah yeah the, the speaker is probably the the hookup for anything else yep yeah I'll share the information and um, so I'm on the way to the, out. on the way to the blue clam I'm going to see if I can like pull Maximus aside a little bit I would be like Maximus I know that money is important to you, but if the speaker might be able to like, maybe not pay us or pay us less and get us the gear that we need to like travel around, it'd be a really good place to do this. Like, it'd be a really good thing to do for this town. I, I, I know that money's important to you, but just think about it. If we need the gear. Yeah. Well, that's a good trade. I mean, it's a really good deal on it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm well, I want to get paid, but I'm willing to accept uh, some items in trade, you know, but you know, c cash flow is king. We got to have some money to spend, you know, we get to these bigger cities, uh, you know, if you don't have money to spend, then you don't got nothing. Cause I mean, we can't just, we don't deal in goods. We deal in, in uh, service. And so, um, you know, I can sing a song, but I can't, I, that's all I got to uh, trade with. I mean, you smoke is I. You you can sing a song. I can fix things. Like we just have to help these people how we can. And but, you know, they probably had to pull together that reward money and it's to like help the livelihood of the town. I I know that we got to get paid, but you know, it's a really good opportunity to like help out and leave some coin behind for them too, because they they need it too. I'll just sort of keep going along with Maximus. And Smoke is kind of walking behind Maximus, and he's he's kind of eyeing up his two guitars to see if they would fit on his feet as a snowshoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. 
<laughs> if you are going to attempt for that, you will have to roll very well. Oh, I'm just eyeing them up. Yeah, you're going to have okay. to fight me. Yep. Smoke got in some catnip or something last night. <laughs> Uh, there's, so, there's some kind of smell going around in the air right now that's getting me all wired up. I'm walking behind Maximus and I don't know where it's coming from. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. Quincy's... <laughs> Quincy's... Um, <laughs> perfume is an aphrodisiac for smoke. <laughs> I think it's is that Quincy's, where you're going with that. I think it's Quincy's natural musk. Yeah. Asparagus is a with, musk is, with, with the musk. the magic of the stone. It has intermingled and oh my god, really the stone. Some bad Quincy's things. it's yeah. called the Quincy's magic, of magic the musk. Stones, uh. <laughs> Sweaty asparagus is a is a Ryan Ryan uh, delicacy. Uh, he, uh, the thing that he has for sale is his own body odor spray. He just he just gives you a hug and rubs you. Help <laughs> uh, Oda Magoo. Yeah. Oda Magoo. It's, it's called Golden Shower. Oh. Okay. We're gonna cut this part out, but you Jason, you need to make that the commercial for this episode. Oh, <laughs> That's what go. it has to be right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a commercial Golden yeah, Shower right there by Quincy Magoo. <laughs> okay, we'll do it. I'll write it up. Uh, that's too good. Um, so you guys are walking through town. Uh, it's not quite midday, but midday enough. It's it's early enough. Still not a ton of people out. Takes you about forty five minutes just wander through town, kind of just see the sights as you're making your way over to the Blue Clam. Um, does one of you want to give me a perception check? I will. Just one. I got a 15. You definitely count the people as you're going by Maximus and maybe like four, maybe five. There was definitely more people in busier last night in the Blue Clam than just that you're seeing outside. So the maybe people, it's a good sign. The people that I do see, what kind of vibe am I getting from them? It's hard to say with everybody's bundle up here. Nobody's nobody's out like Yeti. Yeti's like the only crazy person with no hat on, no jacket, no nothing. He's just he just walks in the elements au naturel almost. Um, everybody else is bundled up, the scarves, mittens, uh, big fur hats, uh, boots and, and pants as well. Especially Smoke. He is just up to the nines and shivering. Yeah. So you you don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but maybe with the mind free again, the people are back to work. Be good. Um, let me know the first time you take out the map. Uh, Maximus. Okay. Out of the cylinder. Um, so you guys are walking over to the blue clam and... Uh, you open the door. Before we go in the blue clam. Yep. Is, is there a magic cart sat outside? Is there uh dog sleds or uh there's no dog sleds or magic cart that you are familiar with. Okay, I just gotta check. I just gotta make sure I check. It's a good plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's no nobody there. Um you can see that there's somebody inside because you can see the little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney as the place is being heated. What do you guys want to do? Smoke inside goes inside blue. immediately. He's, up, he's getting out of the cold. Uh, you get to the door and 
It's locked. And, and um, let me in. <laughs> you hear on the other end, yes, yes, just hold on, just hold on. As Quinn hustles over and unlocks it and opens the door, he's like, what's the... Ru- oh, it's you guys. Yeah, come on in, guys. Come on in. I go straight to the fire. Thank you, Quinn. There you go. So, Smoke is by the fire. Yeti's walking in. Quincy's walking in. Ponto and Maximus as well. Yeah. Is is Quinn there? Yeah, Quinn's here. He's the one that let it uh let you all in. Okay. Um I'll I'll address Quinn um and kind of in a in a way that assumes that he knows exactly who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he Quinn. does know who you are. We were uh, here yesterday, remember? <laughs> All that was just expose, you know, like. <laughs> we are already exposed to the cult. We don't need any more expose to the cult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just spit it out, Max. Respond to what I out. say, not to what I think. Okay, so. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I'll say Quinn. Uh, it was that was a good it was a good uh, performance last night. I feel really good about it. Um, I had a, had a good time in this town. I think I'll come back here. Oh uh, yeah, any time uh, you want to come back, Maximus uh, and and the rest of you as well, uh, Maximus and the miners. Um, you're more than welcome to play here anytime. Uh, which. Uh, brings me to um you know i'm kind of curious we were up in the mine and uh we cleared it out and we noticed that the the acoustics there are just phenomenal and you know (laughs) if one was to you know harness that kind of um ambiance that that Mm. that kind of uh theater sound um it could really make for just an excellent, um, you know, performing mm. a theater. Um, you know, someone who is, you know, of a business type of mind who might want to um, put a little effort in, maybe a little money towards building a proper sound stage in that in that um, big cavernous opening in the mine. They could, um, you know, make make a name for this town and draw people in and i of course would and the miners would come back and uh, perform for for great hosts of people oh wow i've never been in the mine um no i know there's three levels or like three sections like sections to it which 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 Part was the one you're talking about the the, the part where uh, there's a big hollow pit oh so there's a big pit in one of the levels actually sort okay. of interacts with all three of the levels and then yeah. it keeps going yeah oh, if you have oh. a giant spider so what it's he's easy sort to of thinking is down. that if somebody were to sort of like build a stage like over that pit and you can like raise and lower it to all of the levels you could really put on a good show There'd there we go. See, it just, just... and and the the drum kit could be like rotating yeah. and just like on all of the get somebody in the barrel and so, we estimate wow. only a 50 percent chance of summoning a balrog so That'll be fine. <laughs> Maximus, you could be in the barrel singing. It's quite the uh, endeavor. I'll probably have to talk a little bit more to Oris about that, but maybe that's something I'll, I'll look into. Well, it would definitely, like a would definitely lot of... be a draw to get uh, a name like me back again. Oh. You know, and you, you could you could become a, a town even bigger than Bryn Shander. Oh. I'll hide. That's 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 a lot, but um, maybe one day, a long, long time from now, Brinchander's a pretty big place. 
hey, you know, if you got the right thing to draw people in, I mean, I, I just have the ideas, but it would take a mind like, uh, like my friend Ponto here who could design it all and make it engineered the way, you know, I, I, it's just, I'm there blah, to play blah, music. Blah. Yeah, blah, blah. And smoke gives him a look. His idea. From across the room, he gives uh, Maximus a dirty look. <laughs> And, and Quinn, like, it's like, oh, yeah. It's like, so if we got a stage and at least filled in one of the levels, and that would at least make it safer for the miners, then maybe. Yeah, the, you could have the miners mine it into, like, a amphitheater and just, like, mine it out so that it would uh, enhance the sound. Oh, interesting. That's, that sure is a lot, um... Uh, are you guys just going to stay here and wait for Oris, or? Oris, I thought that, um, oh yeah, yeah, we're meeting him at 12. Yeah, he should be back a little bit before that, depending on what time he left, so. Um, but, if he's uh, okay, we stay here. Should um, be fine, should be fine. Um, Marta tells me uh, you're a man who knows how to get things. In a town where people like to have a good time, here's some things. That's true. Um, do you know a lot of people in town because they come here? Yes. We were hoping you... that we could uh, find someone who sells uh, snow shoes. Oh, yeah, snow shoes. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we could. Uh, Oris, Oris probably could hook you up there. Um, He's probably got some in the town hall. Don't really have. Uh... Yes, lit. Sorry, par pardon, Quincy. A, a sled? I get to bargain. Like for dogs? No, no, no. Like, you know, you pull your stuff on it. For old people. Oh, oh, like a a sled that you get pulled with dogs. No, 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 just a sled you pull behind you. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, a, yeah, I know, smaller, I know. A smaller he, oh, a was. smaller sled. Oh, okay. Yeah. More like just pulled by like, um, like a person. Like a, a big oh. cat. Maybe just an old door that we could drag through the snow. Yeah, I. <laughs> I don't like being uh, called a dork. <laughs> I, I th think probably Oris is still your best bet. We do mostly just like boat repairs and like uh, a little bit of cutting the wood for like, you know, fueling the fires, so to speak. But is there any old boats laying around? There's probably some. Most of them are at the bottom of Merid Duldun. Like if so. there's any old unseaworthy boats, maybe we could use one of those. Not a bad diggy. idea, actually. Most of our boats are a little bit too big to drag on the snow. So that's fine. Um, again, I, I think Oris shouldn't be too too long today, as long as everything went well. Yeah, I mean, feel free to take a seat <laughs> if you guys want a drink. Uh, just let me know. We don't have any food or anything ready yet. I wasn't really planning on opening, but you know. And like Something clockwork, and like clockwork, Maximus goes to the bathroom every thirty-five minutes. <laughs> um, he's like, "That's that's fine. You can just take a seat, and and if you want a drink, we, I can hook you up with that. That's no problem." Um, but other than that, um, just give it an hour or so, or it will show up. Can I have some goat milk? Smoke, we don't have milk here. I just I thought maybe one came in. What, a goat? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> no, no, no goats walked in last night. Okay. Lion did, but no goats. So. Uh, Quinn, Quinn says, just motions down to get a table, and he goes back to getting the the, the tavern ready to go for the evening and the afternoon 
Just uh, jump him with that. Yeah, he's just taking down chairs still and just wiping certain tables and cleaning things up. And I got another better to do. I'll just help him. Whatever he yeah, needs. Yeah, Quinn will, will get you to, uh, like, just uh, after, before putting all the chairs up, uh, just to just kind of, like, spot clean the floor in places where there's a bit of a mess. And then sure. just take all the chairs down, um, make sure that the stage is cleaned up. Know, just a little odd things anything behind the, the counter he doesn't need help with he's got that taken care of um the cook is in the back getting things ready as well so are the cobalt here. here no the cobalts are not here okay uh an hour goes by somebody roll me a d4 Let's see how long this takes got it four I also Perfect. got four. <laughs> Definitely four 40, hours. Forty minutes goes by, <laughs> and uh, the sound of uh, uh, four sets of boots comes walking up the steps as you guys are seated around the table, um, waiting. I guess I assume you're all drinking, probably. You're adventurers. It's. Uh, if, when is if not it's a good 40 time. minutes, Ponto would uh, go and sit at a table while everybody else is doing whatever. And he'd uh, pull a set of the tools out of the bag and sort of like unroll this like leather whole thing with a bunch of tools. And he'd grab a piece of parchment and a uh, writing utensil of some sort. And considering Maximus suggested that Ponto designed the stage, he'd just start like sketching up ideas and the best that he can remember, uh, any sort of measurements and, uh, you know, the doubling the size of the beams that like broke on the, on the way out to be like, make sure that they're cobalt proof and just quick sketch up just in case it's needed for one day. Uh, I'll assist, I'll assist Ponto uh, with like, uh... Tom Cruise kind of minority report, minor illusion, where he goes like, okay, and he's moving stuff and reposition. What about if we did it like this and then expanded it with stretched and I uh, assist with the creative okay. process. All right. I'm Do we get a roll? Do we get some design sure. rolls? Um, make a design roll. Go what ahead, Ponto. Do, you think that would be? do it I with assist advantage. You. Um, would this be like my intelligence tinkering. modifier? I would say it's probably a tinkering thing, just because like you're kind of like sketching stuff out. Uh, that would make it a twenty-two. Sure. Oh yeah. Pretty good sketch of like our first very good first rough draft. Um, maybe some of the details need to be sketched out, but it's a it's a good. It's a good first draft. Um, you guys all hear uh, four sets of boots um, kind of just banging off uh, like you're getting rid of snow and stuff on there uh, before you hear the door kind of open as uh, Oris and three other uh, people come in with him. Um, he waves uh, at Quinn. He's like, uh, good morning. Uh, Got done a little bit earlier than I thought, uh, but we see you're already here. We we're going to have a drink before you guys showed up, I thought, but maybe we'll have one. And we'll have a discussion about um, how things need to proceed from here. You all good with uh, having a drink? Eat him, smoke. I think the way to proceed is for you to pay us our 50 gold. Absolutely. That's what I, we were going to talk about. Oh, yeah, we don't need to talk. We just need to hand it over. <laughs> no, I feel like we should talk. Uh, I'll buy everyone around. It's okay. And Quinn just she's like, "Yep, no problem. I'll I'll get the beers and or the glasses of meat and just brings them all down to like the biggest table." And so, Oris and these three other gentlemen around him uh, sit down, and you guys sit down on, on the. Uh, around the other side of the table 
He's like, uh, we, we were at the mine. Definitely cleared out, appreciated. It is a bit of a trick on that first level to get across. You weren't kidding about that. Thank you again for uh, letting us know. Uh, he pulls out the 50 gold and puts it on the table. I said, this is yours. Well earned. Again, thank you. Thank um, you. As for the kobolds, I feel like they could be a very valuable crew of workers to work in some of the smaller spots that maybe we haven't got into yet. So, again, thanks. And he pulls out a secondary pouch and drops it on the table as well. This came from the miners themselves. Let's be specific. Our town can afford a little bit, but not a lot. Um, Smoke instantly relaxes. And he says, he kind of looks at everyone and says, I don't want any of the miners' money. No, you, you've you included a workforce. You've cleared them out and from something else that they didn't even know. They, they understand the dangers that were there. They thought it was just cobalt. That's why I thought 50 gold was enough, but apparently it was more than that. So we'd like to pay you appropriately. Um, we have... Um... We're we're open to doing some bartering. Um, you, this extra money that the miners have pitched in, maybe we could use it to uh, start this new stage building project. Um, you know, it could be a no, 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 no. I slapped Max in the back of the head. <laughs> stage building process. No, no, don't listen to this. No, guy. yet he, he, it sounded really amazing when I listened to him singing oh, no. that. No, 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 no. Ponto slip. has, uh, he's, he's already done all the drawings dance. for no it. No shoes. Uh, it's like, oh, That's Ponto, you is, is the second bag look like it's filled with coin or is it filled with gems, first of all? Make a perception check. Can we just open oh. the bag and look at inside? Still in front of Oris. Hmm. He tossed the, the first. He tossed the first bag like over to like your side of the table. He pulled out another bag and put it in front of his himself. Uh, it's a fifteen. Hard to tell. There was no like real clink of coins in it, but it could be some coins. He really did sound amazing in that mine. Like, you should not give up this opportunity. Yeah, he woke us all up. Thanks a lot for that. The blowhard. <laughs> he, he, Oris looks at Quinn, and Quinn's like, maybe okay, I don't know. And uh, he's like, I will talk to Ponto after we're done, and we'll see if maybe we can do something like that. It would be pretty expensive to build a stage inside such a s large space but small at the same time just to get all the people in and the people out it would be a, an endeavor yes but think what it could do for your town it would be a phenomenon that people would come from miles around you That's obviously right haven't phenomenon. been you have not been around Swindale. There is lots of stuff for miles around. It's called snow. Mm. There's not a lot of people here. It's not like we're down south in like water deeper never winter. Yeah, you could draw towns. crowds of people from never winter and water deep. Not with they, this they winter, would, we can't. They would travel hundreds of miles. Yeah. Again, I'll I'll talk to Ponto. It is a pretty large idea it might take a bit of time and some funding but thank you it travel hundreds of miles like... to uh tourmaline yeah. to see your concert and the next day you announce the water deep concert you could call <laughs> it um you could call it freezing man <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a bad idea. Right. Yeah, That's okay, inspiration. I'm in now. I'm oh. on board. I love it. Let's Ponto, do it. Ponto grabs the page out again and starts 
adding some more notes to the freezing man idea he's you can take inspiration for freezing man that's pretty good, that was good. that's pretty good we're on point with it ice wind dale's freezing man concert yes i'll have to talk to maybe some of my contacts in Bryn shander and see if uh can maybe make something like that happen anyways um the miners want to say thank you for your extra work and for the work source of the kobolds. They've actually gone up. The kobolds have gone up with some of the other miners to be shown the ropes. Good, good. Uh, some of you were talking about shoes and sleds. I, I don't know. What, yeah, we're, what? we did some uh, snowshoes. Apparently, you're the guy to talk to. Oh, yeah, I can. I can I've got a little bit of a storehouse of stuff in the town hall. Can, I can help you guys out. Ponto no, says instead of giving us any money, we just want shoes. That's not a bad idea. You know, just wait a second here now. Um, <laughs> there, there is some uh, cost and some expenses, you know, like I was talking about operating costs and, you know, uh, living expenses, uh, you know, those kinds of things that you just can't pay for with, um, you know, shoes. Shoes. Yeah, but you need a sled too. Oh yeah, and he wants a he wants a sled. Yeah, I don't know if I could help you with a sled. The sled's a bit out of my price range for helping not, you out. But snowshoes, like a kid's sled. Oh, a kid's sled, huh? With, with some rope tied to it. Yeah. I I'll see if maybe I can. Ramshackle something, ramshackle something together for you guys. I think that's what Maximus was talking Almost about. Said, huh. and he's like, he's trying to, he's going through inventory in his mind, just kind of like cataloging. It's like, oh, what can I use to like make something like that? Anyways, um, do you have any really shiny, like polished shields, round ones? No, no, oh. I, no, not here. Sorry, kite shields. We, <laughs> no You'd freeze shorts. your butt to it, uh, Quincy. I put a fur down. Or I'll pour one of uh, the hankies off of uh, Hanky Pink Man over there. <laughs> Mr. Hanky Pink. <laughs> a crazy saucer. <laughs> yeah, all I can envision is Quincy and like uh, Clark Griswold from <laughs> the National <laughs> Life. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> God. You gotta write a song now. I'm, I'm the hanky panky man. <laughs> Jason, you gotta, you gotta write a song now. I'm the hanky panky man. You know, that's um, that's Magoo's Steve, thing. That's not my that's thing. That's Steve Martin, isn't it? Hanky pank man. Is it? I feel like it is. Oh, now he's gonna yeah, Google now it. Have to... Yeah, he's googling <laughs> it. Um, Oris is like, um, he looks at the miners. He's like, if you guys are all right with maybe taking some of the funds back uh, I can help them out with supplying some some of the goods for them and they kind of all nod he's like yeah that's fine and uh, Oris grabs the bag and hands it off to his his right and then you can see the guy just like puts the bag below the table and just starts pulling a bit out and then zips it up and puts it back up top and looks about half as big now the coins or the gems which bag is you can, he? You can know he's into the one the miners provided. The coin is in front of you guys. The 50 gold is sitting in front of you guys in a small pouch. But the one the miners uh, were going to provide extra, they uh, he took some out, added it back to his stuff. If you want to hear if it was coins, you can make a perception check if you'd like. I think Ponto is interested in uh, knowing what was in there. Probably not. Okay. It's like a seven. Yeah, no. Nothing else was alluded. Uh, he puts the table back up. He says, um, he puts it, there's uh, 20 uh, gold worth of gems that we pulled out of the mine out of our stock, and another 20 gold on top of that. He's like, we want to say thanks for what you've done for us. And uh, the miner grabs a bag and tosses it over towards the other one. It lands on the table in front of both. Both of the bags are in front of you guys now. 
the miners kind of like get up at that. He's like, thank you for helping us. It's been appreciated. We didn't really Boris, know it was that serious. Boris, what if you just gave this money back to these miners and gave us the snowshoes? That's their business, not mine. Okay. Any they miners want to sell us snowshoes? I can cover the snowshoes. They took some of the gold out. Yet, oh, if you didn't notice that. The sled business, we can talk at, back at the town hall if you'd like. But for now, our business will conclude here. If you guys Good need Ponto. something right away. Yes, Ponto. Ponto. pretty handy. Ponto, can you hear Quincy? Sorry, I didn't hear that Quincy was talking to Ponto. Sorry. Okay, good. Ponto, you're pretty handy. Could you make a sled? Uh, I mean, if we don't want to leave right away, I might be able to work on something. If, if there's some scrap wood or parts of uh, boats maybe, that... Maybe we could get, yeah, like, like just a chunk of a boat and modify it. What, what do we need a sled for? Or table. So you guys could pull me. And if, if we came to a really big hill, we could just ride it down out of trouble. It's fair. fair. And if we got a big stash of something really large we had to pull across the snow, we'd at least have a sled to pull it on. And who knows, maybe we'll find something to pull it for us. Okay. I'm going to go over to Oris. And I'll just ask him, uh, how far a walk is it to Lonely Town? Lonely Wood. Oh, uh, do you guys have snowshoes? It's probably like two hours. Oh, that's nothing. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's a little ways away, but it's not bad. It's afternoon um, right now. I know it's still morning. Well, it's it getting close to like. I thought we were meeting him at noon. Yeah, well, yeah, was he was he was early. Okay. Um, it's lonely wood, and it's because it's the only woods here, really, in uh, Icewind Dale. Oh. So it's a little lonely. How the hell did uh, trees grow up here if it's always winter? That's a good question. It wasn't always winter here, Quincy. It was once. Quite nice here in Termalane, especially in the summer months where the cool breeze came down from the north and the fish on the lake. And he kind of just like stares off into the distance, almost reminiscing a nice memory of a hot summer night where the there cool breeze at winter. winter here. That's a good question. Um, some say. Frost Maiden herself is keeping it that way. Who, who's that? Frost Maiden, you seriously don't know? Well, uh, I heard rumors of some kind of Frost Maiden thing, but like nobody's been very specific on who this is. Oh. Uh, the Frost Maiden, she is, uh,. She is said to be a being of some sort who took over possession of this part of the world. It's said to be her magic that's keeping it. What do you send someone out to hunt her down and get rid of this kind of <laughs> stuff? One, one doesn't simply just find an adventurer of some sort. I mean, if it was as easy as that, we, we'd, ha we'd have to get Bryn Shander on board with this, but... Who's if, Bryn Shander? The capital here. Oh yeah, that's right. The major the town, town yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just uh just east of uh Targos. Sorry. Yes, yeah. so it's okay, you're new here, I get it. And what was your name again? Oris. Oris, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And he like stares at the rest of you. You guys like, meet this guy yet? His name's Oris. And he like just backs up. He's like, yep. Uh, if you need some <laughs> stuff, I can provide some snowshoes. We can get, we, I have a few sizes available. If 
you guys meet me at the town hall, I can give that to you. As for sleds, um, they're a bit expensive, like 60 or 70 gold at the minimum. So what? I don't know oh, if you guys have How big are these things? Much. I mean, a 60 gold sled you could push, a 100 gold sled you can get at least six dogs hooked up to, but it'll be all right. Why would you want to pull dogs? It's... Never mind. Um, <laughs> Gain, thank you for your help. It's been a great considerance. Consider. Quincy, did you take your here. pills this morning? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll come with you and get the snowshoes. I, it's fine if you all want to come. I I kind of need to size each one of you. Okay. I'm gonna need to make sure I have some bigger ones for you, sir. And uh, yeah, yeti. Yeah, I don't know if I have snowshoes big enough for you, so, but... Oh, my uh, my feet have pretty big girth on them. Just let, I'm just letting you know. And you know what they say about Leonin that have big feet. I do know what they say. Very what, hairy. What, what, what do they say? Oh, big tail. snowshoes. They get, a, they, they get a lot of tail. Oh, that's... They get a lot of tail. And I show them my tail. See, it's really long certainly is the longest tail I've seen. Yes, that's Leonin. what it means. Oh. Um, that's fine. I, I'll, if you guys want to come with me right now, or if you need to settle up with Quinn, it's fine. Uh, otherwise, I can meet you back at the town hall. Well, Quinn, guys. Uh, Quinn and um, What's um, your name again? Boris, can you um, maybe just have a look at this map that I've purchased? And I'll open the map tube for the first time and okay. roll it out on the table. In in the Love map note. tube, there is a single ring with a note laid into it. Am oh, I, somebody dropped this. I pick it up. Am, am I able to notice the ring and... Like when you're opening the map, it's like as ding, I ding. It. As you open it and you just like unroll the map, it's sitting in the middle. So like everybody can see it. Yeah, but can I? Am I able you to want a notice sleight of it hand. before it falls on the table? Okay, so roll a perception check. Okay, I'm going for it too. I poke him in the eye. Yes, this is bad. Yeah, I got a nine. <laughs> yeah, you don't hear the ring. So now you open the map. You can make a sleight of hand now if you want. Nineteen plus one for Quincy. Perception <laughs> check. Okay, so you hear something. <laughs> But it could be a pill. Oh, I better pick up that pill. I rolled a four on my sleight of hand. My sleight of hand is 14. 11 sleight of hand, but you didn't even notice it was there. Um, <laughs> is this Ponto? like an open sleight of hand that like everybody's, yeah, everybody's, everybody's going for the nice. ring? <laughs> uh, well, Maximus would have been the first because he would have opened it and it would have been right there in front of him. Um, your sleight of hand is not good enough to pass. I don't know what everybody's passive is, but I'm sure somebody has higher than 14. I'm thinking Yeti. This um, guy. So Yeti definitely sees the ring, and same with Oris as well. And they, they all like see the ring as you you quickly snap it and put it into your pocket. Um. So they all <laughs> see me do it, but I still get yeah. it. Yeah, you have a ring. With a is it question a mark. wooden ring? Uh, it is a ring. Unless you want to like pull it out and like start to examine it. Okay. I got a twenty-one perception check. Is it the ring she was telling us about the story? Could be. <laughs> okay. And do you know that story, Yeti, or is that a conversation that I had? No, she told us that. Everyone? She did tell yeah. everyone. Okay. That was the first. Pretty time sure she it. did. Yeah, yeah, the first time we met her. Because you were talking about the song. And that's where it came from. Yeah, I thought that was just me and her. Uh, no, you requested her to sing the song, and she said, not quite yet, maybe later, and she came back, uh, and yeah. everybody was in by the table. Okay, um, well, I'm adding it to my inventory. Yeah, you can add the ring. Uh, I'll let you know what it is later. Um, as well as the note as well. So, uh, 
the map is strewn out and uh, you, what what question did you have for Oris? Oh, about the map. And Quinn, yeah. The different cities that might uh, be interested in uh, paying for some live entertainment, which I could then um, plot out uh, sort of like a tour date um, town to town in in kind of a scheduled first we're here, then we go here, then we go here. I mean, if it, Oris looks at you guys, it's like, we're here in Termaline and points to where Termaline is, is like, um, the, basically the two, you can go any which way you want. We always recommend to stick to the path, but sometimes that's not an option. But I mean, you can cross anywhere in the open plains in the middle here. Might be a little longer, a little more uh, wildlife, so to say. Uh, but yeah, I mean, otherwise it's thinking, kind of a, a horseshoe pattern. We would Towns go up to Lonelywood and do a concert there. Um, but you know. What other big towns like Bryn Shander, obviously, uh, what's Targos, on the map here? Targos, Bryn Shander, and East Haven. Those are the major towns here. Bryn Shander, push came to shove, they probably could get all of the 10 towns inside their walls. It's, it's a big place. I'm going to point to the on the map and say, what is this Dwarven Valley in Kelvin's Cairn? Oh, Kelvin's Cairn has... It's a mountain out at the back. Uh, there is a bit of a valley that goes, runs up to it. It's how we know we're on the right track. We don't go into the valley itself, but once you see it, you know if you follow it towards the north, you'll find Kelvin's Cairn. It's just a mountain? Yeah, it's a mountain. As far as I know, I'm not a mountain climber or a mountaineer by any means, or an explorer. There are crystal shards you- there. I have no idea. There could be. I don't know. Oh, and this other town, Bremen. Bremen, is that, yeah. Is that like a small little don't bother go to a town, or is it it's a decent small, size? It's small. Maybe it's, it's probably smaller than Lonelywood, I would say. I haven't been there in maybe about nine, ten years. So, it's small. Lonelywood is nice. It's they make they've nice kind of scrim shander people. They have little oh. trinkets and things. And here, this one to the south is called Good Mead. Yeah, that's it where we get good. all the mead from. Actually, that's why it's called Good Mead. We should go there. Yeah, let's forget about Lollywood. Good Mead, huh? Okay, this I is mean, boring. Let's go, boys. Let's okay. Get some shoes. And let's go to that wood that's lonely. Quincy might want to go to Dugan's Hole. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that to come up. Um, uh, he's like, sure, yeah, is uh, we can meet back at the town hall and we'll get you your, your gear and um, yeah, we can go and uh, Oris uh, thanks Quincy and pays him. And uh, you guys follow him straight to the town hall, and we'll take our break there. Okay. I- I'm actually gonna pull out my tail before we go to break, and I'll say, sure. "Can I, can I get a sock that fits his tail?" Oh my goodness! His tail gets pretty sock. cold. Hey, we can shove the crystal under there. Hey! Oh. I need it. I need a long sock. I'll pull out. I'll pull. A out. long what? A, a long tooth. sock. A long sock. <laughs> I'll pull out the hound. What we all? Long hard scarf. sock. Yeah. So the hound's tooth scarf. It gets wet. It'll get hard. Hard. And I'll be like, here, you can wrap this around it. Yeah, I'll stick it straight <laughs> out. <laughs> you three. My goodness. And now for our sponsor. <laughs> long suck. Okay. If you can incorporate the log suck into the Oda Magoo. <laughs> by During Quincy. The break, you need to make a nice the golden uh... shower musk. Yeah. It's new by Elon Musk. <laughs> Just a hint of asparagus. <laughs> And then dash a ball sack. (laughs) 
Oh, yes, you guys. <laughs> oh, good lord. Okay, <laughs> I will see you in five minutes. Right, time for a beer. <laughs> I, I need a drink or something. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Hi everyone, we hope you're enjoying this episode of Perilous Pursuits. Feel free to check out our website at www.perilouspursuits.com for lots more content. If you'd like to support us further, consider becoming a Patreon and receive perks all the way up to joining us in a Perilous Pursuits adventure at patreon.com perilous. We would also like to send a shout out to our Perilous partner, Describe. It's a great dungeon master resource to give you professionally written text on everything from locations and spells to items and creatures that you can use in your very own games. Check out our link to describe at www.perilouspursuits.com for a 10% discount. Hello everyone, this is Jorgano at your favorite water deep bomb and potion shop, Moose Knuckles. Come on down to our shop and check out our new product, Magoo's Ball Cleavage Cream. With a secret mixture of sea salt and asparagus, Magoo's Ball Cleavage Cream doubles your inventory capacity while keeping your most precious items discreet from prying eyes. So who needs a bag of holding? Just use the bag you already have! Come on down this Saturday for a personal demonstration and a one-day 10% discount. Great news, everyone! With the recent devastation from a wandering brass colossus in the seaside city of Port Nyanzaru in Chult, we are able to get a great location to open our second Moose Knuckles location. Stay tuned for details on our grand opening. Doodaloo! Well, we all ready? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So... Horace leads you guys out to the town hall, uh, opens the door uh, to a fairly well-furnished uh, house. Uh, it's a large room on the main floor with a big, long table. That obviously, he has meetings uh, here, but it's uh, not... He's not well off by any means. It's not lavish by any stretch. It's no worse, no better than the inn or the tavern it's fairly similar in quality is there uh, any kind of police force in these towns there is militia in this town yes. um, he leads you off to the one side of it he says uh, snowshoes right uh, no problem grabs kind of stares at Quincy and Maximus and rummages rounds and each hands you each a pair and Ponto he's like oh, a little bit smaller and he kind of goes down to the one end and looks at it. he's like oh no maybe a little bit grabs a different pair and hands it to Ponto and then stares at Yeti and Smoke and goes okay biggest ones I've got and uh they're a bit small but they'll do each ah, hands you a pair as well. They're Perfect. they're a little bit bigger than uh, Maximus and Quincy's, but not a lot bigger. Maybe two inches bigger, three. Big enough, but if you were to have a proper size snowshoe, it'd be like ginormous for someone of your size. So. But you walk through the snow all the time, don't you, Yeti? I don't know. Will this make me faster? I have no idea. Never used a snowshoe before. It wouldn't... You walking through the snow without your snow, without snowshoes is a certain pace that you're just accustomed to. Oh, I don't need these not, shoes then. Keep them. It's not, it's not that if you had them, you would be able to keep up with the rest of the group. You'd be walking almost like at half speed compared to them. Oh, okay. With well, the snow. One. <laughs> Thank you for the shoes, then. Yeah. So he's like, uh, about the sled, and he kind of is like going through his like storehouse that he's got in the back, and he's like, I don't really have anything small. It's just, we just have standard sled sizes. I don't know if that still interests you, but 
kind of goes above and beyond what I'm willing to shell out for free. I need six small socks. Small socks. I need socks. six. I need six socks from my tail. It's like okay. Um, six socks. I'll be six socks silver. about this big. That yeah, done. Two silver, and he like rummages through another crate and pulls out uh, some like winter socks and tosses them over to you. I uh, start cutting the ends off all of them but one and start putting them down my uh, tail. Sure. It's going to be one weird looking tail. It's warm though. Warmer. Warmer. They're all different colors, however. Perfect. Yeah. (laughs) You are now Rainbow Tail. Um... He's like, if you guys want to buy a sled, I mean, it's a little cumbersome to move on your own unless you have dogs, to be honest. I don't want a big sled. I want a little sled. I told you, we, the smallest sled I have is like 70 gold, and it's it's big enough to like pull by a person, but it's, I feel like if you guys were to use it, it kind of like lose its meaning. It's more for like when fall like sections of a tree and you stack it and then you haul it. Well, who makes the sleds here? (sighs) There is a guy in town that we employ to build some stuff for us. Most of everybody's stuff is here. The town works together. Communists. It's not. He gets paid. So, so we got like led to this like storehouse where all of this stuff is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, do, do you do you mind like? Is there anything that's sort of like been? Like you said that it's for falling trees. Like, is there anything that's been damaged that hasn't been fixed? Like, I, I can I can mess around a little bit and maybe have something purpose for us i mean obviously we aren't going to be packing trees around but if there's something that is just going to be used for scrap then we probably well most that. of that stuff is given back but make a precise persuasion check ponto i'm the most charismatic one of all of us i got this that is a 10 Well, most of our stuff that is broken down or in disrepair either goes back to um, Ian and he fixes it up for us or just takes it apart and repurposes it. So, sorry, we don't have anything like that, Ponto. That's fair. Again, uh, if you want a bigger sled, it's fine. You can have one. It's 70 gold, but. Just going to weigh us down. That. You should have taken the barrel from the mines. Mm. Cut it in half. Or just sit in it. You guys roll it the whole way. If there's anything else I can help you with? Oh, How much? Oh, go ahead. How DM question. Yeah. How much would us pulling this sled actually slow us down travel wise? Because, like, a two hour trek to the next town is fine, but it is a lot further to Targos or Brinchander if we're dragging a sled with us. Just... It won't, if you're Wait. pulling it, if you're like lashing it to like one or two people and you're just like walking and pulling it, as long as the sled isn't overladen should just glide behind over the snow. How about one of those uh, baby Bjorns? We can strap it to the smoke. No, we're fresh out of Bjorns. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> I can have uh, Quincy on my, on my belly. <laughs> yeah. You guys would stay really warm together? Mm-hmm. 
the one thing I wanted to make sure we cleared up before we had the break, um, we had the bag of gold to pay on on the table. Mm-hmm. That's the fifty gold. Then he had also another bag of twenty plus gems. Yeah. So twenty and twenty. I would have scooped up that whole pile and put it into party gold. There is no fucking party gold. But, uh, <laughs> I know that Yeti will have something to say about that. You're so. super quiet, Jason. Oh, okay. I don't know why. I'm I, muting him. Maybe I moved the mic. <laughs> I, I keep lowering <laughs> the volume as he's talking about taking the money away. Yeah, so... I'm in charge of party gold. I have it all. Um, it's the kind of thing where um, I would have scooped it all up. But if Yeti's going to have something to say, then I'll divvy it out. Uh, and just make sure. Seems that it's like all a recorded. group question and not a me question. Yeah. Give me my sure money. All recorded that. Um, you know. I, I would take my gold. share of the gold and the jewels. We don't know how many jewels are in there. We we haven't opened that up. Ponto should hold it. He's our leader. So I'm happy to give Ponto the 20 with gems and everyone else can get 10 from the from the party gold. Let's divide all the gold and then Ponto can just hold on to the gems. That seems good. Oh, so so everybody be... gets 10 and then everybody should get two and a half from the other. Okay. So 14. 14. Perfect. And one gem worth Four gold. One gem worth four gold. Mm-hmm. Ponto can hang on to my gem. Yeah, Ponto can hold all the gems. They don't mean anything to me. Good, Maximus. Good leadership. I mean, you're you're looking at spending money on your uh, uh, sled. You got to know how much money you're starting with. You got to spend. Just buy a piece of fabric with Dragon on it. Yeah, a tarp. I mean, I got this uh, houndstooth scarf you could just hold on to. Perhaps you might find something better in Lonelywood. Yeah, uh, you can buy a sled, but if you don't pay someone to pull it, then what's the point? It's true. You guys can pay me, I'll pull it. I'm not pulling it. I could try to pull it, but I don't think it would work that well. Probably not. Alright, we ready to head out? We got yeah, let's go. Made their purchases. We just keep the uh, keep the water on our left. We can't miss it. Mm-hmm. It'll be good to see trees again. Yep. Um, Quincy and Smoke, give me a d20. Uh, 14. 15. Okay. Um... The wind is definitely picked up, and it is just the same cold. Um, nothing crazy today. Just, just cold and windy. Hey Maximus, what is that uh, ring that uh, you fell on the table there? Oh, that was um, just something that. Um... Um, I left in the tube, um, you know, for safekeeping, and I, it I looks it like there. the innkeeper's ring. I see that. Yeah, it was something she, um, you know, she and I had a connection, and she wanted to give it to me. That's all. It's something for me, personal. Okay, let's go. Who is going to be uh, leading the track? 
Well, before we leave, uh, before we head out, um, I just want to say to the guys, you know, the group collectively. Uh, what the fuck? We don't have time for this, Maximus. We need to go. I don't want to look at that ugly image. Um, Always talking. Talk while we walk. I just okay. Uh, so guys, look. Like, don't be afraid of your fears. They're not there to scare you. They're just there to let you know that something is worth doing. Fucking children's book. Let's go. Oh, no. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Scary Santa. Jeez. Freaking me out. You need to move over to cover that face. Yeah, that creep. That's well, even worse. It's I'm peeking over your head. Fire people here, and you guys are just memeing each other. You inspired us to meme. All right. Well, <laughs> Yeti's obviously not impressed, so I don't know if Yeti benefits from anything. <laughs> How many hit points you can all, are we at? You can all take your temp hit points. Is it five? I think it's still five, right? It's still five because we haven't gotten to level three yet. Anyone know where level three is around here? We can just go straight there. <laughs> You're looking for a badge. That's yeah, level, level three. three badge yeah. on the chest. Yeah, I heard that's a thing. <laughs> I uh, I guess I'll lead the group, but I'm just going to keep the water to our left. I think. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, you know, with my rough sleep last night and the snowshoes that I'm unfamiliar with, how they even work, um, yep. I think I need to make some kind of a check. We have to make dex checks check. to use the sh snowshoes. Yeah. Snow we'll get shoes. there. Oh, that's not. Don't that's you not worry. Me, we'll you know? get there. I just thought we're trying these out right away as we start off on our trek. It would be. You know, we'll get there. Don't you worry. Quick, we have to run. It's quick, easy journey. Only two hours. Uh -huh. Through a forest. He's on the edge of forest. He's good. Uh huh. All right. Lead the way. I promise no enemies. <laughs> I don't promise. <laughs> if you would like a survival check, I yes. got 13. Okay. Can I uh, can I get in on that? I'm proficient in that. No, that's why I asked who was leading the troop. Oh, okay. Then I'll be in the back. Yeah, we should get a marching order probably. So it'll probably be Yeti, then who? Then Max Smith. Yeah. And probably Ponto. Quincy and then so you guys make your way to the edge of town and you can see this kind of like trail it's kind of more still definitely snow covered from the evening snow but you guys are going to put on your snowshoes now I take it yep yep okay, so everybody make a dexterity check or a, yeah a dex check We'll see how this acrobatics goes. or just straight decks if you're proficient in acrobatics i'll let you roll that what Otherwise if you're half proficient and you're not <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna I? play that card and play it out oh uh, yeah i it's okay it's only one point different natural one <laughs> you put them on backwards <laughs> I've never used them before. How do I know? They didn't come with instructions. It's easy, just like this. So Yeti's Yeti, running around. Yeti, I think you got them on backwards. I think they go with a pointy end forward. Yeah. <laughs> Quincy agrees. You, the, you curve, the curve goes down. It's aerodynamic. You want the curve down. <laughs> That's right. 
Yeah, yeah they're kind of like hooked up a bit, so. It's to cut through the snow. You gotta have to point your hand forward, I think. The submarine <laughs> technique. Yeah. What did Ponto get? Uh, nine. Yeah, Fourteen smoke. for smoke. Fourteen. So, Quincy, Maximus, and Ponto, um, you're definitely slowing the group down. Probably <laughs> for the first hour, takes you maybe an hour and a half. Before we realize that we've got them on backwards, I'm picturing them falling over all the time in the snow. Yeah, sideways. well, it's, I'm just walking the harder down because I move five feet slower than you guys. Mine are on the right way. We're pulling them out of tree wells, all that kind of stuff. It's a hard, it's a hard fought first. Half Who the, the hell journey. would plant a tree so far down? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why would you put the tree way down there? <laughs> Uh, um, for the second half of the journey, you'll have advantage now because you've all figured out, oh, we should put it on this way. All of us? All of us. Roll again. We're going to only get one snowshoe check. We're going to make it. We're going to make some mileage out of it. 14. 17. 22. Quincy Crip. 18. Perfect. You all figure out that they need to go this way forward. Hey guys, you kind of this. Like, they go this way. I knew that. You, you, you're all kind of like, oh, this makes way more sense. Yeah, I knew that. I, I, and, I totally um, knew that. Now, Don't Yeti, if works. you're going to continue leading the troop, we'll get another survival check, and then I'll need a perception check as well. Survival is eight. Oh, good. Oh, and perception is nine. Oh, with wow. In, what with is me, happening with you? A two and a three. Being in the back. He's, he's just looking at his feet. Being in the back, should I, I'd be looking around, too, behind us and all around. Do I get yeah. one? I'll give you a perception check, sure. Uh, that's a 16. You notice that Yeti is definitely wandering into the woods. In fact, you've been walking into the woods for at least half an hour. Uh, Yeti, keep the water on the left, you said. Yeah, it's right here. Oh, where'd it go? Hey, Yeti, why, why do people dig holes to plant trees around here? What? You, you plant your trees so far down. Why do you do, dig those big holes there? Put them down in the ground like that. Oh, uh, nobody plants a tree. A tree comes from the world. Well, why are they so deep down? Because we're on 10 feet of snow. Oh. Well, who the hell would put 10 feet of snow on here? Uh, Oral? The snow maiden? We should <laughs> kill her for that, Quincy. <laughs> The DF smirking with the name Oro. I'm not sure why. Who, who's the sure, Oro? Yes. <laughs> this is why I'm smirking. <laughs> I was going to say Aurel because it's easier. <laughs> like the mermaid. Oh, yeah. Oro. Oh, I knew a girl like that once. <laughs> That's what smoke was going on about. <laughs> um. With your guys's Yeti, your passive perceptions, what, 14? Uh, Yeti? 16. Perfect. Um, as you've been walking into, slowly had wandered into the, you are now in the middle of this forest. Um, I wouldn't say lost, but because you can follow your tracks, but you know that you've kind of meandered off the right path. Um, in front of you, you hear kind of this ruckus, this noise of a large animal approaching. And because it rolled lower than your passive perception, I'll let you have it. So you can hear a large animal kind of walking through the forest. Everybody quiet down. What? Everybody Ponto, down. What? 
Ooh. Roll because people were talking. Very good. He wasn't very perceptive. You hear a large beast, um, maybe a hundred feet off in the woods. You kind of hear rustling, the trees kind of swaying and moving a bit. It's a large animal is approaching. I, gra- I, I tackle uh, Quincy to the ground and we lie on the snow and cover his mouth. Hey, kitty, mm-hmm. get up. No, I cover your mouth. Kitty, get up. <laughs> Is the monster. What are you guys doing? Uh, it's about a hundred feet in front of you, Yeti. I go check out what it is or what? I tunnel through the snow. I'll sneak up on it. Okay. Axmas is going. I'll stay with everyone else. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Maximus is going to stealth ahead. Yep. Yeah, that's what he says. In a burrow. In the snow. I give him a guidance. Wait, no, I don't have guidance. <laughs> I give him a guidance, but it doesn't I'll, do anything. I don't have I'll that give problem. him a guidance. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Oh my goodness, you guys. You got this, buddy. Yeah. Good job. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go in the sort of general direction that it has been pointed out because I am not as passively perceptive, and I'm gonna get up to a tree and I'm gonna sort of like tap Maximus on the back and I'm gonna like hide behind the tree and I'm gonna like look towards and see if I can see anything. My passive is thirteen. Did it roll lower than thirteen? Uh no. Okay. Rolled higher than 13. And lower than 14 and higher, higher than 13. No, his passive is 16. Oh, I thought it was 14. Oh, I thought can it was I, 14, but I was wrong. Can I investigate the scene and see if I see anything? Uh, you can make a perception check to look, sure. That's not going to help But go all. ahead. I know. Um, go ahead, Maximus, and make your uh, stealth. Really good. Okay, my stealth is a crit. That's wonderful. So that's a uh, twenty-five. Jeez, Louise! My perception is a dirty twenty. You see faintly off. Maybe it was the movement that caught you, but you see this white, large, furry beast slowly meandering. Like large Ooh. for me, or large for regular-sized people. <laughs> You would say it, if it stood up, probably be taller than Yeti. Oof. Maximus, be very careful. Are you messaging me or are you just whispering? <laughs> uh, well, I can say it telepathically, so yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Can I respond? Uh, no. Okay. I can just talk to you. <laughs> okay. I, I hear. Ponto in my head. I hear like him warning that I should it's, be careful. It's really big. I'll pop and my I, head up to see if I can and see I it. I cast guidance on you when you went by. I'll pop my head up to see if I can see it. Then I'm oh. gonna need Quincy. Then I'm gonna roll a perception check for the animal. Because as soon as you pop up, Quincy's gonna say something. Oh, I still, I just, my head, I still have my hand on his mouth. You can't see that. Okay. Does the guidance go immediately on my next check? Or no, it it's one minute. Choose? One minute. Okay. So I can choose. Yeah, in the next yeah. one minute. Okay. Um, You sneak forward maybe 20, 30 feet till you get to like a bit of a tree well where you can kind of like hunch into it, keeping your head low. You can see this massive white moose. It is humongous. It easily stands eight, nine hundred pounds minimum. It's the biggest thing you've ever seen, Maximus. 
Sounds like dinner. And it's just the one. I, or I'm not the one looking, so... Well, you snuck forward to look yeah. to see what it was. Okay, so I can see it? Yeah. From my hidden spot? Yep. Smoke hears in his mind. Get off you me, you big oaf! And how far am I from it? You've maybe got 50, 60 feet. I'm 50 or 60 feet from it right now. About, yes. Okay. Wait a second, Quincy. Um, and you can see it's, it's moving its head. Almost like it's looking for something. Does it look like a monster or does it look like dinner? Does it look like a... It looks like a monster. Okay. Oh. It looks like... It's got red crimson points on its, like, massive antlers. Or it has gored some being or something. It definitely doesn't look normal by any means. Okay. Then, uh... I put the map up if you want to look at it. I'm going to, um... What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Knock it down. Okay, I'm going to, from my place of hiding. This is a a moose monster. (laughs) Okay, from my place of hiding. Oh, I'm going to have to move further forward. I have to get within 30. While you're Can I sneak busy, again? while you're busy, kind of taking in the situation, yeah, it's like ears kind of start perking up a bit, like it's hearing sounds, maybe breathing, and it's very aware of what's going on. You feel like maybe it's definitely picked up on some of your guys's presences. Smell the asparagus pee. <laughs> I, I poke my head up to see where it is. Yeah, go ahead. What do I do? You poke your head up, and you can see this huge, massive white beast, like nothing you've seen before. Smoke. And I, I look around for cover. I see that tree to my right. I say to Quincy, sure. "Let's let's let's get to that tree." And maybe we could start crawling that way. I would assume a uh, moose looks like an alien creature to smoke. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea what it is. And to be fair, I think a large moose probably weighs about 1,200 pounds. Yeah, I was so going to say that. If was huge, it'd be like maybe two or 3,000 pounds. Yeah. I, had, I was doing way too much fast math in my head. I'm like, wait, that's still not right. Uh, like, uh, I've seen a large moose, and I'm like... Sled. I was going to say, that's a small moose, that, yeah, 700 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll whisper into Quincy, let's crawl over to that tree. And I'll stay where I am while he while he um, crawls. Well, I don't know what he does, but I'm going to wait for him to crawl. Okay, well, I'm within 60 feet of it right now. Mm-hmm. And so... I'm going to shout out to it. You're the reason the gene pool needs a lifeguard. And I'm going <laughs> to cast vicious mockery. Does it understand you? It, it, we've been through this before. It only needs to hear me. It doesn't need to understand me. 
the big opener of the cantrip. Yeah. <laughs> big opener cantrip at 60 feet away. Vicious mockery. Sure, what does it need to do? I think it's a saving throw. It's a wisdom it? save. Um, thir- 14. You idiot! My spell save is 13. <laughs> you always roll a 14 on me. I rolled a 13 and it's plus one. It's 14. You just can't really, not roll Really, again. I did. Really. Okay. That's more of an elk than a moose. Okay, well, I vicious mockery at him. Yeah, so he is definitely aware. And you can see his... He picks up and he just spots you immediately. I have and... You. You don't have that opportunity, unfortunately. Uh, Well, I just dropped off the signal, so. Oh, yeah. In that sense, you're hiding, yes. I'm hiding. So as Quincy Um, gets off smoke, Quincy yells, You big oaf, what the hell are you doing? I got snow in every orifice now. I can't even get the snow out of my jacket in hell. Quiet, quiet, Quincy. Quit getting off smoke. Quit yanking on his tail. He's got a sock on that. Quincy, there is a big monster over there. We need to get to a tree. It's not so big. I've seen it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. <laughs> Did you guys script this? Have you got lines? Not that uh, monster. That monster over there. As you see the large white moose um, bear down and lower its head and charge straight at uh, Maximus. It's going to charge at you, Maximus. Mm. It's good that it rolled low. Um, We're not in initiative yet. We're just... This is kind of like just before initiative (laughs) starts if you really want to go there. Okay. If, if it's just before initiative, would Wanto maybe have a chance to do something in uh, reaction to uh, Maximus yelling out? Sure, depending on what it is. Uh, can I prepare a spell? I'll allow you to prepare a cantrip. Well, then that won't be very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, 15. Uh, 15 hits. Oh, I think it did. But apparently it does. Yeah. Um, where are my D8s? <laughs> I don't have enough D8s here. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> Hey now, he's a rock star. He's about to die. Um, thirteen points of bludgeoning damage as this antlers oh, oh. from this massive beast runs you through Maximus and almost into the tree. And it like tosses you off and immediately goes in to hit you once more with its hooves. Oh, shit. You're dead. It's a sacred beast. Why didn't you attack it? It rolled a two, thankfully. So it will miss. Because it would technically do more damage because it would have knocked you prone as well in the first movement. Does it get advantage on its attack then? No, because uh, it's just like a follow up right away. So it would have like while you're going down, it makes the extra attack for free. Okay. Um, it hits. You see this huge hoof just right beside your your arm, and you're looking down at this leg, and it is like the size of Smoke's thigh. 
this leg that comes down and you're looking up and you can see it's just staring at you that says something because moose have spindly little legs yeah this thing is massive um it breathes brown pants today (laughs) it breathes out this huge plume of uh moisture into your face and it is rotten and a stench you have never smelt before and you almost until recently with a handkerchief (laughs) (laughs) um it hits your gut and you almost instinctively retch a bit as it like backs up slowing its head back and forth almost looking and daring you to make the next move. We're still not in an initiative. I'm going to let you get one opportunity. And he's just you staring want. at me right now. It's staring at you. Oh, man. It's going to back up 20 feet slowly. Yeah, I'm just going to... It's like just like yeah. eyeballing you and you can see this huge massive set. Yeah. Front of it. I've just doubled over. Yeah, nice rack. It's got a <laughs> beauty of a rack. Um, the rest of you are all kind of like frozen in, like just shock of how fast this thing moved through this deep snow, and the thought of it just hitting something like that, and just you can see the blood dripping down the sides of the antlers as it's backing up it eyeballs the rest of you and intently looks at you you can feel like it's like showing some recognition like it's trying to like like perceive and remember your faces and what you looked like I bow in reverence to this creature Um, I'm going to if I have a moment to do something I'm going to put on the ring Oh, you what? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that was a weird motion. He's really getting his moose video. on. He's getting his moose on. <laughs> oh my goodness. You can add that into the commercial as well. He's got his moose on. Oh, or yeah. Quincy. <laughs> that's the second commercial. Yeah, that's uh, the one you record. Yeah. That oat of moose knuckle. <laughs> up, up to the knuckle. <laughs> this is uh, such a bad episode. <laughs> up to uh, the moose knuckle. Okay. Okay. Uh, you see it sway its head back and forth, backing up and staring down at that. And as it sees Yeti bowing its head in some respect and reverence to maybe the owner of the woods almost so to speak it plods off in a more uh, eastern direction off to the other side of the woods perhaps towards us no away from you towards the east that's where me and Quincy are well no more like in the grand scheme of the map oh I see okay. the east gotcha kind of all settle into the quiet, still sound of the snow, and you can hear the crunching as it's just slowly making its way, like it's looking for something else that was in these woods. I wonder if that's oral. Yeti, you seem to know what that was. Why did you bury your knee? It seems like a forest spirit of some sort. That thing would have made a good mount. I, th- I think that's what Maximus was thinking. I don't know anything of this creature, but it is amazing looking, very powerful. It was massive. I wonder if it's a benevolent spirit or if it's something of a servant of oral. I, I do not know. Did it look intelligent? Like you said, it was trying to recognize our faces. 
definitely looked intelligent, you would say. From other things you've hunted, make a survival check. My jam. Uh, 15. It's definitely intelligent. That is not your ordinary beast. That thing was thinking when it attacked you, Maximus. Smart. I think you might be right, Yeti. We can't hear you at all, Jason, what you said. I'm not feeling so good. Well. You can see kind of like spurts of blood or in the gear and the wounds where Maximus got impaled by these huge antlers off this beast. Why did you attack it? Attack it? I, I merely just told it where to go. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think he'd like that. I will cast fairy fire and I will give you eight berries you're gonna cast fairy fire and give right. him eight berries uh, uh what's that's the other literally one? The what you just fire? said it there's a different one there's one with the berries they're good yeah allergic berries i'll cast allergic berries <laughs> it's better you, than dingleberries <laughs> you can get eight hit points worth of dingleberries <laughs> eight hit points thank you oh thank you oh that's better did you get I five temporary hit points? Crappy too. Oh yeah, you had temp hit points. Yeah, so eight brings you back to full. Oh, okay. Is that exactly how many you needed? Yep. Okay, perfect. So, perfect. with that, um, what do you guys do? Let's find oh, the, the lake. Least, do you... Yeti, we need to find the lake. to the lake. I mean, it's literally, it should be right there. We were following the lake. I don't know what happens. We go to the know. south, the, the lake should be there. We should go to the west. Our left. Our left? Yeah, you should go west. Either south or west should find the lake. That's true. South go far enough west. south, you'll you'll get to Termalite. Go this way. As you walk, start walking to the west... But another half hour goes by and uh, you find your way back to the lake. So you can make another survival check. If any of you notice that the lake is not on our left, <laughs> gonna, you I'm tell me. Rush ahead and take second we place because Max is uh, struggling a little bit. I'm going to cast Guidance on Yeti before he redirects us. Sure. Oh, thank you. Uh, 14 plus a D4. So 16. Sure. You're like, yeah, and so, I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was just the wind and whatnot. I started heading into it instead of like following the bearings I needed. But you head straight north again, following the lake in about another hour goes by it's definitely midday towards the end almost and uh you arrive in lonelywood hey here we are Does it look like a tiniest place it's just Um, you kind of walk into the wood, out of the woods, and you see spots of houses scattered in the woods itself, almost as you come out into by um, Mara, the lake, Mara Duelden, and um, you kind of come upon this little tiny town. Maybe it's not very big; it's like half the size of um, Termaline, maybe. Hundred people live here, tops. 
He looks nice. And this um, place is, is on the lake? It is on the lake as well, yes. If we go over to the Ten Towns map. Scroll out and then we will reveal areas. Everybody, it's the map right in between Targos and Tourmaline. Yeah, I see it. You don't see you it? You guys kind of walked no, I in. I see it. Okay. Guys walked in from this end into town as you slowly kind of walked through the main town. Look for a tavern that's warm. <laughs> Maximus, um, you you learned of a place here, did you not? It looks uh, yeah, like Scotch the, Creek Campground. The Lucky Liar Pub. Ah, perfect. It's got to be a place where we can uh, make some money, you know. Maybe we can help some people, eh, Ponto? I mean, helping a person here or there. Making a coin, not getting attacked by giant mice. Mice? Moose? Mice? 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 <laughs> yeah, it's mooses. Maximus is so mad. <laughs> that, that was not a mouse. That I was... mean, none of us got attacked by a mouse except oh, Maximus. So. That was way more than a mouse. We could have. We could have taken it. We could have done it, Maximus. Uh, I don't feel like I still have holes in me. I mean, maybe you could sing out to those too. I got good berry juice pouring out of me, but there's still holes in me. Pouring out of you. <laughs> <laughs> um. You guys kind of walk into town and you can kind of see there's a few people at the edge of the lake itself. Um, they're probably fishers as well. One or two people walking around. You guys walk, are just walking straight into town. Let's ask a local. Hey, where's the pub? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm friendly enough. I'll wave to them and they were like, yes. Oh, looking for the lucky liar. Oh. You, uh, you here to see Danae as well? Of course. Danae all day. That's our motto. Is is she the owner? Yeah, uh, Danae is. Um, it's just up to the north. When you get to the water's edge, just head north. You can't miss it. Oh, shit. You have to follow the water's edge? We're not yeah. good at that. I mean, you can't miss it if you literally go around the corner and go up. It's just there. You can't. It's only an idiot would lose a lake. <laughs> you haven't met this guy yet. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, maybe we'll see you there later. Uh, good, good evening. Evening. What kind of chuckles when he says that? Or she says that? Or he says that? <laughs> They, 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 ask. they said that. They, yeah, they, them. Could have been. Can't tell with all the clothes. Um. Yeah. So you guys head into town. You find the docks. Uh, you start heading north. You presume. You kind of get around the corner, and you can see this this building that stands out. You can see ornate um, kind of like posts or beam structures like that. They've been kind of like showing the uh, talents of the town, so to speak, that are carved and they're intricate looking as this uh, more ramshackled together building. 
uh, with a sign that says the lucky liar. How is it spelled? Uh, L I A R. The lucky liar, as in someone who lies. Right. Did, did you initially write in your notes liar like the instrument too? L Y R. No. I didn't because it's spelled that way. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, hey. <laughs> that would be a good name though for a for a pub, the lucky liar. Yeah, I wrote well, I wrote down bolt just in case. <laughs> Good job. I'm full of liars. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, maybe when I play later, uh, it'll have some new meaning. I, I can't wait to introduce you again, Maximus. All right, my hype man. Oh, I am the hype man. I'm the hype man. Hype man. Cuckoo, <laughs> <laughs> could you? Cuckoo, could you? Or bring There's everybody so much, to the so feet. much shoulder action and like the hands barely move. <laughs> <laughs> the head goes down. Um, you guys walk in and a fairly what you assume is normal here. There's it's maybe half the size of uh, the blue clam. But warm and quaint inside, uh, you can see a giant, huge, uh, my word fireplace. That's the one I was looking for. Fireplace <laughs> off to one side. I was like, I was like going to say chimney. I'm like, that's not a chimney. <laughs> I go straight there. And it's, it's roaring and it's, it's heating this building up warmly. Is there um, any, um, is there any dog sleds outside maybe a magical cart there there is dog sleds there is no cart outside and how many how many um dog sleds are like in a row all lined up ready to be knocked over like are they uh all at the back like <laughs> at the back there is 10 dog sleds or sleds are you gonna walk in there like terminator 2 and just say i need your boots and your pants and your sled I just want to know before we walk into the place what we're walking into here. Yeah, there's a bunch of sleds out back. Does it look like we recognize any of these sleds? Roll a perception check. Smoke walked in. He's going to the fire. I don't know what your perception was. 14. You don't recognize any of them. Okay. You guys walk in and it's bustling for a tavern of this size. Um, who you assume to be Danae um, is in behind the barkeep as she is getting drinks and fetching people food. Um, very similar uh, food styles in Termalane as it is here, just because they're both in the same kind of region. Uh, lots of knucklehead trout out of the lake. Uh, a bit more gamey here. You can often find some, maybe some rabbit and maybe a winter boar every now and again. So, what do you guys want to do when you walk in? Uh, make a like a. a a general perception of the uh, patrons here. Sure. If you're looking for someone specific, you can make an investigation check or perception, whichever is better for you. I'm looking for a uh, a sled merchant. <laughs> <laughs> really? I look for an angry dwarf woman who wants to kill us. Hmm. <laughs> And I probably walked by all those people without recognizing going straight to the fireplace. Yeah. I don't see her if she's here. And I'll go straight to Danae. I'm, I'm looking to secure What did Quincy roll? I don't know what business. you rolled. Or what? Um, I'm assuming you're making a perception check or investigation, whichever is higher for you. 
Um, well, obviously not investigation. Um, oh yeah, I rolled a three. Hmm. Yeah, you oh. don't recognize anybody. Yeah. So as you all walk in, kind of find a table, I'm assuming. Uh, Other than Smoke, who just beelines it straight for the giant fireplace. Is there like a bartender? There or is like... a bartender. Okay, uh, Quincy's going to go up to the bartender. Uh, do you have any of those little uh, fancy drinks with the little umbrellas in them? Um, at the same time, I'm assuming Maximus is walking up with you. Uh, you see a raven-haired um, human female uh, th- that you presume is Danae. And she says, Oh, no, we don't have any of those. Um, we just have mead and uh, something a little stronger. Either or is fine with you. You let me know. A little stronger. This will keep you warm through the night, old man. Oh, okay, I'll have one of those. It's a gold for that, but that's fine. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, is this okay? And he pulls out uh, a gold coin and flicks, puts it on the counter. Oh, that's, that's fine. I can take that. And she hands you a half full cup what you assume is very strong. Where's the other half? That's all you get for a gold here, sir. Holy crap, you guys are cheap. Uh, Drink it slow. You're not from here. It's something that comes from our town. It's fine. So, uh, Quincy, who are you guys? uh, Do you have a straw and a little umbrella? No. We don't. Please go sit down. I don't have time all day for you. As Quincy's moving from the bar, I'll go up to the bar and talk to her. Do you have any warm goat's milk? Oh my god. I hate you people already. (laughs) There's a third one here. Let's get it all done, please. If you ask for something weird, all of you can go. I don't care. (laughs) I like this, Danae. She seems like good sort. <laughs> Maximus, you're up there with them. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I. I can't. I'm not even associated with these guys. But uh, ask for some of that big mouse meat or mouse, uh, mouse milk. <laughs> mouse milk. <laughs> mouse milk. <laughs> A big mouse that we just ran on against in the forest there. Danae, look, uh, I'm a business Ponto's man. back at the door talking to Yeti. Goose, geese, moose, meese. Yeah, no, I, it, yeah. It, it, makes, it makes sense. It makes I sense. agree. If it's a flock full of birds, what is a flock full of moose, meese? So if anybody asks, Maximus got almost killed by a mouse. All okay. Right. Um, I'm going to talk to Danae and I'm going to say, look, this ragtag group that you see before you is actually uh, quite a quite a good group of musicians. And uh, we've played in Targos. We've played in Termaline, two shows in Termaline. Uh, we are hoping to be able to entertain you uh, here, you know, for the right price uh, here in the Lonely oh. Wood, you know, put on a show. Oh, Maximus, I got a peanut stuck up my nose again. Can you help? <laughs> More like an uncracked walnut. <laughs> <laughs> she says, oh, in our bards, that makes so much sense. I fucking hate bards. <laughs> oh. What you do is fine. It's not for me, but it's fine. You, you lighten the mood, it's great. If you want to play, we can negotiate a price if you want. Well, you know, you've got quite the turnout here. I'm, this is normal here. Yeah, I'm just saying maybe uh, a per, we could work on a percentage of the... Uh... No, the answer is no. No? No. I'll play well, you a flat rate, that's fine. 
Well, the flat rate in Termaline was going for 20 gold a night. Really? They paid you 20 gold, those stupid fools. I mean, uh, that's what we're worth. I mean, we put on a good show. Okay. You want 20 gold for one show? You see, you s- show me what you got and then we'll talk. I'll walk up to the stage. And I'll do a huge roar. And everyone kind of like jumps and turns and looks at you. It is time. It is time for Maximus to sing. And you will clap. Here he is. I was that good, Maximus? I'm getting better. I'm getting better, aren't I, Maximus? Everybody's just staring and then they're looking to see like Maximus is probably one of these new people and they're like staring at the group and Danae's like you ready? What's up there? Um, I'm gonna just have a look out over the crowd of people you know, that have gathered here. Yeah. Um, do I see any um, elves in the crowd? No elves. No elves? All right. Uh, then I will um, I'll clear my throat and I'll sing a song and it'll go. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them. Know when to walk away and know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough counting when the dealing's done. All right, you can roll. I'm assuming Ponto was up there as well doing his regular spiel. So... As he was uh, starting, Ponto ran away from Yeti, ran over, gave Maximus a quick tap on the boot at the bottom of the stage, cast Guidance, and then he's going to set up three of the cubes and give him a little bit of a light show going on, like frantically tinkering. In the That's probably while I'm doing them. Up for this. I'm like, holy crap, I was not ready. But yeah. Well, I was doing my intro there. Uh, it's probably when you're doing it. Oh, no, I wasn't that prepared. Oh, okay. I'm absolutely not that prepared. But. <laughs> so, because you're not prepared, you can either do your light cubes or you can do guidance. Ooh. You light cubes, he gets advantage. If guidance, just a d4. I, I, I think that I would probably do the light cubes. Okay. But he'd still smack him on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm making my roll. Working away. Yeah. Okay. You can make that's, it with advantage. Yeah, that's a dirty 20. Perfect. Everybody's boot starts tapping to the beat. As you complete the song, uh, you finish it and everybody kind of gives a, a rousing cheer and starts clapping a bit for you. Say to Danae, wait till wait you hear Quincy and Yeti join in. It's so much better. I play you the only do the You only do the one song, and then you kind of look down at Danae, and you finish your one little, like, hey, this is my uh, free show. Um, to oh, come on, that was... Show, show that you was what, good. what you're worth. And... Uh, you can finish your concert or your one thing. I assume you do is like, thank you, everybody. We're Maximus and the Miners. I'm assuming yeah. you do that. Yeah, I, I kind of mm-hmm. kind of boost the crowd, get them get them all fired up, and that's my job, Maximus. Yeah, but I mean, now that I've finished the song, <laughs> and they loved it, and they're applauding, and try and try and leverage that into a better deal. Yep, that's that'll help the deal. Uh, go through or at least give you some persuasive increases so you go back get off hop off the stage um walk forward back to Tanae and she she'll just be like so you really can sing that's fine it's pretty good but that was one I'll, I'll agree. I'll give you 15 gold. No drinks. 
or I'll give you 12 and you can have two drinks. What about 15 gold and you fill out my customer comment card? Oh, you want me to write on that card? Yeah, I, I okay. want you to give a review. Sure. I'll yeah. give a review. Did I tell you I hate fucking bars? Hey, <laughs> as long as it's an honest review. Oh, it'll I'll be take, honest. That's I'll, fine. I'll, I'll take what it, what's coming to me. So far, you pass with flying colors. But we'll see how the night goes. 15 gold, no drinks, steal. Did she just offer to spend the night with you? No, she's, we're negotiating a deal for the, the concert. <laughs> so you lost us drinks for your fucking card? Yeah, look, you got money. You can pay for your own drinks. I could have had three drinks. I hyped, man. I need I need three gold for my hype services. <laughs> Don't you worry. You'll get paid. <laughs> he buggers off. <laughs> It's just perfect timing. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> so, I, I I think I agree with you. Eddie. This, Danae is my favorite character so far. <laughs> uh, Danae, okay. Danae, Danae, okay. She looks at you, Smoke. She's like, so we don't have milk, but that's fine. Do you want a mead or something stronger? I'll take you a mead. Do you it's have funny. any meat like that giant white hey, Shmoke, beast we saw? This stuff, huh? uh, I'll tell her you about the. You can make big... a Constitution check, Quincy, if you want to start drinking that. Uh, I'll tell her about the the white beast that we met out in the snow. Oh. The white beast, you say? Yeah, it had these big horns, and it was oh. all white. It was huge. Yeah, I think Ponto called yeah. it a mouse. He's, he's been around for a while. He's been, killed a few of our people that go into the woods to cut some of the wood down. So I'll like he's looking I'll, for something. I'll point to Yeti and I'll say, Yeti, that kind of knelt down in front of it and it just walked away. That's smart. Usually it's looking for people that shouldn't be in the woods. So it's your we guardian? I uh, wouldn't call it a guardian, but more like haunting. But it's fine. It's, it's a beast that has found its way into our woods and it is looking for people that wander that shouldn't be there. Back where I came from, we're pretty connected to the spirit realm. It seems like you are here too. That thing is hunting people. It's C looking for people. specific people. Yes, it is. Then we should probably consider ourselves lucky. <laughs> Considering you all walked in here and didn't die. It attacked, it. it attacked our singer over there. Oh, oh, geez. I'll cut him a bit of slack then. That's Maybe he, he sang a song to it. I don't think it liked it. Huh. Maybe not the best fly to feed when we're trying to get a show. Well, your meat will be five silver. Thank you, Danae. Is there a place where we can stay the night in town? Uh, you'll probably have to talk to the speaker. You roll the 17 con check. You're not quite tipsy, but it, it's hitting you like a ton of bricks. And I'll ask her to point out the speaker. Speaker. Uh, Is he here tonight? Um, give me a second. 
She scans the crowd. Yeah, I'm looking for the speaker's name in this town. She's scanning the crowd. <laughs> yep. <laughs> mm, doesn't have a speaker. That's weird. There's Maybe a, his name is just the speaker. Could be connected to on the map. Um, speaker's house. Yeah, I know. But it's not in my notes. Make one up. Oh, no, there it is. Uh, Nimsy. Nimsy. Yeah. Nimby? Nimsy. N I M S Y. Nimsy. Is he like a mayor? <laughs> Quimby? Mayor Quimby? No. <laughs> thank you so much for that reference. Mayor Quimby. <laughs> mayor Speaker Nimsy. Nimsy Huddle. Um, if you go down and she'll kind of like give you directions to his house usually if people are coming then he's got a place but we don't have an inn anymore so. uh, when I see Maximus Broken I'll down. just relay all that information to him I want to go up and I want to order a double of whatever Quincy got. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and a single as well. So I'll put the three gold up that I assume that they okay. asked. I'm going sure. to bring one over to Yeti. I'm going to bring over you? one to Yeti. Oh, I'm, I'm Ponto. Hi. It's nice to meet you, Ponto. You sure you're okay with all this? This is a little. This well, will drop of, you a little one. One of them's for my big friend over there. And point back. Ah, to <laughs> that makes more sense. I'll go back and I'll give Yeti the single. I'll get the double for myself. <laughs> <laughs> like a real man. Um, and tell and you tell Yeti this is a double. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Maximus, uh, did you get a drink while you had your? conversation with how much you were going to get paid sure yeah i'm going to order meat i'm not going crazy i got yeah. to sing you know i got it's I got five silver oh, sure five silver and i also tell maximus my conversation uh with dine about where to stay in the speaker and blah 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 since you are the one to negotiate for the miners maximus I thought you should know this. Okay. I, I got it. Don't worry. I think we'll cut it there for tonight. Seems like a good opportune time. We'll have your show at the beginning of the next episode, and then we'll go from there. Awesome. Thanks, all. What a ridiculous cool. episode. Yeah, I was just oh my all God. over the place. <laughs> Way off the chains. I'll be uh, laughing my ass off when I listen oh, to Oh, seriously. Again, I'm going to have to not <laughs> won't listen to this with other people around. <laughs> it's going to be so crazy. <laughs> it's like, I'll be asking, Art, why are you giggling over there? Sorry, just heard a funny joke. Oh, what was the joke? Can't tell you. <laughs> Can't tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Perilous Pursuits. Be sure to check out our website at perilouspursuits.com for new episodes, news, and other information. In the meantime, go give your Craig Cat a walk, give your owlbear a big hug, and go play some D&D.